managed to pick up the mail another day. It's not just another day, though, because I have a very special uh, package that has arrived for me today. It's addressed to Captain Kangaroo, and look, see who it's from? It's from Hasbro. I've been waiting for this package for uh, some time, anxiously awaiting the arrival of this package. Some time ago, the um, Hasbro people came to me and said that they would like to work with me to create a, a very special line of toys for young people, the kind of people that I speak to every day. Now, over the last uh, 16 and a half, 17 years, uh, we have done some merchandising on Captain Kangaroo, but we have a reputation for being a little sticky. Uh, we're interested in the young people that we talk to every day in a very special way. Uh, a lot of toys that uh, have been presented to us and not uh, merchandised or endorsed in any way by us have just simply not met our standards because we believe that our program has many special features and represents something special to the parents of America and that we have a special responsibility uh, to see to it that the toy uh, matches the quality of our program. I'm not just talking about the quality of the toy physically, how it's made and put together and how it holds up in good hard play. That's important. But I'm also talking about philosophically the quality of the toy, its concept. So when Hasbro came to me and made this proposition, I asked a lot of questions. We had some meetings. And after my questions were answered to my satisfaction, and after these meetings, uh, we collaborated on uh, a line of very special toys. Now, I think the best way to uh, tell you about these toys is to tell you about these meetings that I've referred to. It'll give you some insight into our thinking and how uh, we went about uh, the design of these toys. I guess uh, one of the men that I asked the most questions of was Dr. Howard Wexler. And uh, Howard is with us uh, today. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you, Howard. Uh, for those of you who may not know, Dr. Wexler is uh, an educational psychologist. He brings a tremendous formal background. But I'll tell you this, having worked with him uh, in many exhaustive meetings, uh, I'll tell you that he also brings a great understanding and a great compassion uh, to uh, his work. And I think you'll agree when you see what uh, Howard has done, that uh, he not only understands young people, but uh, he really feels very strongly about uh, what should be given to young people to uh, play with. Now, Howard, as I remember, uh, one of our first discussions led us to uh, wood toys. And we all became pretty excited about it. But I think I turned to you at one point and I said, now, Howard, why wood toys? Well, <clears throat> Remember there is that commercial about that fellow who keeps the secret of the uh, wine underneath his hat. Right. So I'm not going to let the secret out of the bag, but I will tell you that it refers to two particular things, and one is the production of the items, and two is the design of the toys. The design of the toys is such that it affords us an opportunity to make a toy that has the perceived value that we're after, mm -hmm. and yet is, in our terms, inexpensive to make. Oh, yeah, but now wait a minute. I wasn't convinced of that because I know, uh, I know the market in, in, in wooden toys, and I said, look, I love wood as a material, and I know it's a great material for young people. I can't think of a better material, the feel of it and the, the luxury of it, and the opportunity to create the, the, the design, the shape, and so on. But I said to you, I know that wooden toys are just too expensive. They just haven't been, and I wanted to reach uh, an audience of young people uh, that, that could afford these toys. I didn't want them to be uh, uh, for an elitist group. I didn't want them to be merely prestige toys. I wanted these toys to be available to uh, youngsters all across this country of ours. So Howard, I said, they're too expensive. How can we think about wooden toys? Well, someday we're going to let you see the elves that are making these toys for us. <laughs> But so much for that. In fact, the toy that you're holding in your hand now, if you take a look at it, is quite simple. And yet, we feel so appealing uh, to a youngster. Uh, you have the chick over there, for example, again, which is a very simple design. And again, very appealing. 
In fact, there's something else I'd like you to look at. You notice that the string that comes out of that pull toy is not harnessed to uh, a screw eye, something that screws into the wood, but it comes out right from the piece of wood itself. And that's, again, that's our secret. Mm -hmm. how, how about the wheels? Uh... The wheels of all our toys are hard wood, mm. and they have hard wood axles. And if you notice, there are no fasteners, no nails. Mm -hmm. And that's important for safety needs that, uh, that we uh, expect of the Hasbro company, that we expect of the industry uh, for our young people. Well, they are very, very pretty. Uh, when I look at this beautiful pink pig, when I look at this vibrant red fire engine and uh, the working parts on it, when I look at the colorful orange airplane, one of the nice things I like about it, I think it's best illustrated with this airplane. Uh, these are kind of half toys. I, I, I've been calling them half toys for a long time because uh, the toy is only half here. The other half is here in the mind of the child. That's what I think we need today. We need to develop the imagination of young people. So to really take this airplane and to make it work and to make it fly, no gimmicks, no batteries, no moving parts. The child is going to tire of in a matter of minutes. The child is going to bring himself to this toy, his imagination. And uh, here's another good example that Howard has in his hand right I now. Think, I think that wood lends itself to this simplicity. Mm -hmm. I think wood, by its very nature, means that it's something that is not mechanical. It doesn't do fancy things. Mm -hmm. And I think from a marketing standpoint, what we have to be well aware of uh, at Hasbro is that we have a line of preschool toys, our romper room school toys, which we have been very successful with. In fact, one of the items, the inchworm, did tremendously well. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody in the industry, of course, knows about an inchworm. We were terribly concerned then mm -hmm. about coming with another preschool line, having you involved with this preschool line, and having it compete with our pre-existing line. Mm -hmm. We feel that by using would we are not competing with ourselves at all you in have fact, involved me as a matter of fact as you can see you've involved i see me that yeah. Yeah. and you're doing very well <laughs> right. uh, i i think something also has to be said about the marketplace and the wood that's out there in the marketplace there's really no line of wooden toys that's right in fact when you look in the stores you might find some wooden toys that are in their natural state their natural wood now we've researched this and found that most of, pe most of the people want that vibrant color mm -hmm. that you see here in our toys. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting enough, the uh, firms that do put some color into their toys have a dye-like substance that they put into the wood. You notice these toys here are very glossy. They have a high gloss to them. Yeah. Now, you'll see this in European wooden toys. Mm -hmm. Now, what we did was we took some of those European wooden toys and we actually sent it to a laboratory. We had our laboratory try to ascertain how they achieved uh, that uh, finish. And uh, we eventually found out, and you could see it right here. This finish, by the way, is impervious to water or oil. It's elastic-like. Go ahead. I bite can, I can bite chew right on in, it. yeah. I did. This is one of the things I asked Howard, too. I uh, chewed on it, so I, just to make him prove the point. Well, you can see that we've done a lot of thinking about this. I mean, this is really... Uh, something that I think uh, is proven in the toys that you've seen. Of course, when you uh, find the parent uh, getting to the store, we want to show him something uh, at first sight. And here we have the actual size of the toy, the fire engine, and here's the other side. There is Captain Kangaroo's wooden toys. Howard, I think this is just fine. I think that uh, we have an exciting concept. We have some fine toys and toys that I can be proud of. I think we've uh, met uh, all the objectives that we started out to meet. Yes, good. Thank you. Well, okay. Now, I know that um, Howard wants to join you and uh, he's ready to answer your questions. So I have to work a little bit of my magic to get Howard out of here and to you. So Howard, hold on to yourself. Ready? Right. Okay, here we go. Okay. Abra, Kadabra, please, and thank you. 
I think it worked. My friends, I give you Dr. Howard Wexler.